Hey, future badass business owners, welcome back to the Start a Small Business Podcast, where each episode will be walking you through the process of starting your small business from concept to open for business. Now, in this episode, we're going to talk about what small business should you start. It's important that we take a few moments to discuss which is the right business for you. Now, that sounds like an odd episode because most of you probably already have an idea of what type of business you want to start, but I do think it's worth discussing for reasons that you will hear. Humor me, will you? Keep in mind that you are going to be living in this business day after day. So it's important that we make sure that it's the right business for your goals. If you are starting a business around something that you have done more as a hobby, something that you love, there is a chance that you will grow to hate this business and hate this hobby as it'll become more of a chore versus an escape that it is for you now. Many small business owners grow to hate something that they once loved as the joy they once had got sucked out of it and the pleasure they were once receiving from it is gone. So please make sure that before you start the business that you are prepared that that is a possibility. You also want to pick a business model that has a chance to develop into more than just a job. A business that you can structure not only how to pay yourself a wage for doing it, but also has the potential to create profits because after all, the ultimate goal here is to create a business that creates profit. Now we will be discuss creating a job versus a business in an upcoming episode, but it is important that you run some numbers to ensure there is meat on the bone, as they say, for your profits. Your research on pricing and costs will be critical. So please make sure that you listen to the two episodes where we talk about research as they are two of the most important episodes we have. And since you already know that I'm a huge fan of starting a business in your local community, I think it has a great potential for profits and success if you really find a need in your community and you fill it. For example, in my community, our homes are just now starting to hit 20 years old. And while we have had minor roofing issues, we are about to start seeing much bigger repairs and replacements needed on those roofs. Yet we do not have a full blown roofing company in town, which means everybody's going to be looking outside of town because everyone here now specializes in the small handyman type of fixes we have needed. Talk about a need in a community. If a fully licensed roofer came to town who specialized in our tiled roofs, they would be busy nonstop with so much potential going forward because of the aging of the homes. Now, don't underestimate how many great opportunities there are for businesses in your community. Remember, people don't need you until they need you. So just figure out what that need is and be prepared to hop on it. Now, I know what some of you are thinking, hey, I'm thinking about doing a landscaping business. There's already 50 million landscapers here. Trust me, there is never enough landscapers, cleaners, pool people. Trust me, you can have tons of them in most communities because there are people always looking for somebody with some special sauce that you're going to bring to the table because not everybody is equal. Not everybody does a great job in what it is that they do. So even if there are already tons of people doing what it is that you want to do, I promise you, there is still a way to make it work in your community. Like I've said before, there has never been a greater time to start your own small business. The internet has opened up so many opportunities for us to earn money and follow our passion. So it's definitely an exciting time because now people can just Google you and find you. Whereas before you had to knock on a lot of doors in order for people to know you. But now with some smart use of different tools that are out there, you can actually be found pretty easily. So what would be some great local small businesses that you can start? When I think of local small businesses, I tend to think of three buckets. Bucket A are the brick and mortar businesses that you find in shopping centers, strip malls, and standalone locations. For example, a dry cleaner, fast food joints, haircutting places, your favorite pizza joint, insurance offices, pawn shops, tutoring, music training. By the way, doctors, dentists, and other medical services that serve their community are also in this bucket. Bucket B are the fastest growing segment, which are mobile businesses, where you take your business on the road and take that to them. For example, glass repair, mobile dog groomers, laundry pickup services, food trucks, etc. Basically businesses that traditionally are done in a brick and mortar, but now they can take it on the road. And bucket C are those businesses that are traditionally done at the customer's home. Plumbers, electricians, handyman, deck builders, pest control, pool cleaners, landscapers, cleaners. You know, these are the folks that normally provide a service that the homeowner needs around their home and they've traditionally gone to them anyways. However, don't forget about all these other businesses that are out there that provide services such as dog walkers, tutors, home therapy, piano teachers, massagers, etc. There's all kinds of businesses that are out there. You just have to be creative. And once again, is there a need for it? And you can start it. Now, you might be asking yourself, is there a bucket that's better than others? 
Now, each bucket is going to have its own different pros and cons, uh, but take financing, for example, brick and mortar businesses tend to have a much higher cost to start up because you're going to have all of that rent, you're going to have all of that equipment, uh, utilities, all those different things. Uh, so you really, brick and mortar should be one of the last things you want to do unless you have a business model that will absolutely start making enough money from the get-go in order to pay all those finances. Whereas if you make it a mobile business and you take it to them, the startup cost is a little bit higher than normal, but it's not as bad and most people can pay off their equipment in a quick time period versus having it dragged out over and over and over because once you pay off that box fan, for example, it's yours and you can continue to use it. Now, when you're thinking about a service type of business that you plan to provide, uh, for a lot of people, it's something that they've already done. For example, maybe they were a hairstylist for great clips or something like that, and now they want to be out on their own. Or maybe you worked in the garden department at Home Depot, and now you want to go out and start your own landscaping business or designing out people's yards. You might have a love for cleaning and organization, so you decided to start a cleaning business. Or you have a passion for pools and you want to start a pool cleaning business. There's so many people that start their business based off of something that they really enjoy and they want to be able to help people. Those can make some great business opportunities. Like I said earlier, though, just make sure that you're not going to set yourself up to have the passion taken out of you. Now, for some of you, you don't have the foggiest idea of which business you're going to start. It, no problem. The key is finding a need in the community and filling it, just like I said earlier. So what type of businesses are your family, friends, and neighbors looking for? Maybe there's a business that people feel there is no great talent or people that they can trust. Can you fill that need? And by the way, a great resource for this is Facebook, believe it or not. Get into your town or city's Facebook groups. Trust me, these people are always in their dreaming of businesses they hope would come to town and they're begging for referrals for great businesses they are looking for. Once again, all you got to do is pay attention and say if any of them light your fire and go, oh, I can do that. I can fill that need. The key is to think creatively and think outside of the box. Who would have thought that somebody would pay people to actually come to their house and pick up dog poop? People have made thousands of dollars a year picking up dog poop. I, there's businesses I hear about all of the time that I never would have thought of, that it's just a need that's out there that people are willing to pay for. The key is to think of things that people don't want to do. Maybe they can do it, but they just don't want to do it. Think about it. Pool cleaners and landscapers are classic examples of this. If you have no money, you cut your own grass and you service your own pool. But when you have some money and you have some disposable income, all of a sudden you want to pay someone else to do the yard work for you because you just don't have the time and energy. You want them to also clean your pool. I know when I had my first pool, I was taking care of it all the time and it became very time consuming. I swore when I got my next pool and years later when I did, I said, you know what, I'm going to be able to pay for a pool person. Otherwise, I'm not going to have the pool. It just comes down to what is it that somebody's willing to pay someone else to do for them. So when it comes to what business should you start, really, it, it, it's an open field out there for you. Uh, it, more than likely, you probably already have an idea. Just make sure that the idea is big enough, all right? Because yes, there might be a need, but if it's only 10, 20 people, then how are you going to grow and scale that business? So it's important that you really take the time to ask yourself, how can I make this a viable business that can grow? Uh, I think that's probably the biggest mistake that people make is they find something that's so niche, you want to have a niche and you want to find something that, that not as many people want or have, you know, have tons of competition, but at the same time, you need to have enough customers for what it is that you do. Uh, for example, if you're going to do garage doors, then you need to make sure that the communities that you're going to be focusing on actually have garage doors and they're not uh, just carports because that's obviously not going to work. You can be very limited on the number of people that you can work with. So just make sure you keep in mind that you know, whatever business that you're doing, that you're going to be spending a lot of time doing it and it has the potential for growth. And think outside of the box. There's all kinds of really cool things that are out there that you can do, that you can create. Uh, and it, it, it's pretty exciting. Now, what we're going to do in the next episode is we're going to take 13 questions that I want you to ask yourself before you even make this leap, because I think it's going to get you to start thinking about what it's going to take in order for you to be a successful business person and what you're going to have to give up in some cases, some pros and cons. There'll be some good and some bad in there. Uh, don't forget there is a startup guide below uh, for you to be able to download so that you can go ahead and use it to help you start your business. All right, with that, let's go ahead and dive into that next episode. I'll see you over there. Bye.